Star Wars, possibly one of the greatest movies ever in the history of cinema. Okay, I've got to come clean here. I'm a bit of a big Star Wars fan. I've seen the films probably more times than I can remember. I've got the books, the toys, the t-shirt, the props. I think you get the idea. Now, almost 40 years later, the newest Star Wars film has already been breaking box office records. So what's the secret? What's made these films stand the test of time? In Star Wars, there's something instantly recognisable about the alien world you see on the big screen. And that's the work of a man called Norman Reynolds. Norman went on to be one of, if not the greatest production designer in the world. So when I was offered the chance to meet the man responsible for some of these iconic movie moments, well, I was all ready to fly off to Hollywood. But instead, I just popped around the corner to meet the double Oscar winner living in a leafy corner of Cheltenham. Steve, Norman, come in. Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Norman was the art director and production designer on some of the most famous movies ever made. From his original designs to the construction of the final sets. His work created the make-believe world of Hollywood blockbusters. This is an example of actually how it actually turned out in reality. His home is filled with his original artwork. So these are the initial drawings that are issued to the construction department and everyone that's um, vaguely interested. <laughs> The first director on Alien 3, he wanted the, the, the planet to be an ecclesiastical planet. So I started by doing some scribbles like church-like buildings, really. You're obviously keeping an eye on everybody to make sure your original vision is there. And that, that day when you see the reality compared to what you start with, what's that feeling like as a production designer when you've got it right? Well, you, you hope you've got it right, really. You never <laughs> quite know until you actually see the film, and even then you have second thoughts, but it's... Um, that's, I suppose, the most satisfying part of the whole thing is, is to uh, start with a script and end up with um, sitting in the cinema. What Actually seeing the thing in reality is, um, is very rewarding, really. But I've got nothing to fight for. And looking at the new Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, it's obvious that the look has been hugely influenced by Norman's vision for the much-loved original. Norman really defined what Star Wars looks like and what it feels like, and we talked about that visual language constantly as we were trying to recreate what we, what we came up with for Episode 7. It's interesting that he came and visited our art department, and when he walked into the room, everybody stood at attention, and they were so excited to have him there. It's not always been plain sailing, though. Irving Kirshner, who directed The Empire Strikes Back, had serious doubts about this classic set. And I said, well, this is it, Kirsch, it's um, all ready. And he said, I can't shoot this. This is not possible. How can I shoot this? When you design a set, you have to have some idea how to shoot it, otherwise it's impossible. So I went through my little routine. He said, I can't shoot this. See you Monday. The worst thing you can say to a production designer is, uh, on a Friday, um, I can't shoot it because you're stuck, you don't know what, it, what to do really. So I just uh, bit my nails and um, plowed through the weekend. On the Monday, Kirsch walked in and walked through the action with the actors and turned to me and he said, this is the best set in the film, thank you very much, he said. And I was, oh. In 1982, Norman won both an Oscar and a BAFTA for his designs for Raiders of the Lost Ark. But four years earlier, he'd won his first Academy Award for Star Wars. Being the first, I suppose it's the most exciting in some ways. But then, if I can carry on, I was pretty excited at Raiders, I have to say. But uh, no, take that for weight. Can I? Wow. Absolutely. That's amazing. So this is Academy Award to John Barry, Norman Reynolds That's and right. Leslie Dilley, art direction on Star Wars. On Star Wars, indeed. Could you quite believe it when you won that? No, I couldn't. I, I know it's mine because we were going down the lift afterwards and I, we chinked... Uh, oh, no. I know it's mine because I dropped a chink on. You dropped it? No, I just turned around to John and tried to bang into his drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Much of Norman's work was brought to life in the very down-to-earth location of Elstree Studios, a place he was familiar with from his early work on the TV show The Saint. 
I had the Good set. Heavens. I had the set specially prepared for you. Wonderful. Norm. And in Studio Eight, there's an old friend waiting for him. This massive studio was the blank canvas in which some of the most memorable scenes in movie history were created. Here we are on stage eight. Did we do Jabba's Palace on eight? I do believe we did. <laughs> I know that laugh. <laughs> Producer Robert Watts worked with Norman on his Oscar winning movies and many more. Give us a sense of what it would have been like when you were making Star Wars and, and Raiders and, and the big films in the 70s and 80s in here. Well, it was buzzing because you'd have a shooting stage, but Norman had it all going on ahead and behind because they'd be striking the sets we'd finish, they'd be finishing the sets we're about to go on, and everything was laid out in order. Now, where are we going to have the obelisk? Remember we talked about on, on the relief? Yeah, the seven, seven or eight up, feet. Yeah. Yeah, enough to Just seven or eight feet is all we need. And Norman Reynolds was there with me, and he had done Star Wars. And I was very excited to work with the guy that did Star Wars. And, uh, and yet Norman wanted to do something different than Star Wars. He wanted this to be a whole genre apart. Norm, first of all, that set, what was that like to work on in design? I'd never done anything like that before. I said to Stephen, I'll just show you how this boulder works, because I wasn't sure whether he'd like it or not. So he said, OK, to the special effects man, let's try rolling the ball. So he rolled the ball down, and we all stood by, watched the ball roll down, and there was a small figure at the end of the track it who was Robert Watts. Stephen asked me to run in front of it. <laughs> I get to the end of the run and there's some two by fours across the end of the set. So I kind of jump over them and, and the ball stops. And Stephen says, OK. And I said to you after that, I said, you could have stopped it, couldn't you, Norman? You said no. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we're talking about raiders and, and big sets, we've got to talk about the Well of Souls and, and, and the snakes and everything as well, because, I mean, that's, that's a challenge. Well, that, that was the, the biggest set I've ever been involved with, really because it actually went from the floor to the ceiling. There weren't enough snakes originally. Is it true that Stephen wanted more well, and more? Stephen says, we need more snakes. So I said, all right, Stephen, how many? Well, about another 3,000 or something. <laughs> it was less than two days I had them in the studio. They're quick breeders. Very. <laughs> I met Norman on Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was an incredible adventure, and Norman was a mentor in many ways. He's, he's very modest about his contribution to the, to the movie industry. How would you sum it up? I, I, I agree. I think Norman's incredibly modest, and I think he, he hides that talent. I think in his modesty, Norman's been amazing at passing things along. Neil Lamont is our production designer on the next Star Wars movie, and I only found out recently that Norman had actually mentored him. I miss it at times. There are times when I think it would be good to be doing something, but then um, I probably wouldn't be sleeping at night if I did. I've had one or two calls, but I've been uh, valiant enough to turn them down, so people stop ringing now, which is a good thing, really. This may be an empty, cavernous film studio right now, but in the hands of somebody with the vision and talent of Norman Reynolds, it can become a spaceship, an alien bog planet, or even a mysterious temple. Or maybe even somewhere a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Mm -hmm.